hey we are back it's been a minute uh, um it is i um uh, boss grande of the gentleman squad with my co-host and pal and pal how are you doing what's the deal what's going on everybody feel good to be back finally out of out of back at the house you know not di- out there with the, the foolishness yeah we're gonna get into <laughs> the foolishness we're gonna get into that uh first off uh, it's um we're gonna start it off a little sad uh first off rest in peace to the queen cicely tyson a pioneer in her field um was she like 96 98 but she She lived lived through a lot you know uh for all those people who are racism is different no man she could probably tell you (laughs) that there's some still some shit out there but um um all the movies she was in all the stage plays the tyler perry stuff the just just the impact she had was amazing i know um i've been watching um how to get away with murder and she was doing a good job as the mom on the show uh Mm -hmm. opposite of uh viola davis who is also another uh heavy hitter in the field but you know um yeah man it's sad especially when we lose our queens you know all the all the knowledge is gone. It's like a big tree falling, and you know we can't get that knowledge back. Right, right, exactly. <sighs> I don't think enough people like actually think about that as far as um, what that means about all the knowledge that's gone and all the stuff that they could potentially learn. Because yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, cause you think about it, like you go, like how many people still do big big family reunions right right now? You know what I mean? Um, I know not outside of COVID, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying like big family reunions where y'all don't just get around and eat and stuff like that. Y'all actually um, like fellowship. Yeah, y'all, <laughs> y'all, 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 yeah, like you got old, the old school cats who telling their story and telling their history, right? Because that's how you pass down in history, generation, generation. Right. And not a lot of people do that still. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get around, y'all have, t- y'all have fun in each other's company. But, but are y'all <laughs> like, are you being laced up by the knowledge that they have from their years of being on this earth, you know what I'm saying? And just in their knowledge of, of, of the family, your family history, right? You know what I'm saying? That stuff. Oh that, yeah. 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 And like, I, I, um, not to spend too much time on this too, but like, you know, that's like one of the main reasons, um, why I stream too, you know, even if it's like to one to two people, mm-hmm. I feel like at this point in my life, you know, I'm at a, uh, my kids see me at a, a certain way and like, um, I feel like <laughs> somewhere down the line, you know, this might be me in self-preservation mode. It's like they can go back and be like, hey, when they tell their kids, hey, this is your granddad. This is what he did. This is how I am. So they have that that visual snapshot because I know my grandmother and my mom, you know, they was forever with the life touch photos in school, man. And like, like, dog, mm-hmm. you know, even as bad <laughs> as as nerve-wracking was it was to, to get dressed for those pictures and shit you know um creating the memories and for them to go back and like this is how you looked you know even though like facebook does it too it's just like i feel like like going back to that knowledge and stuff that we got to get back into that um mm-hmm. another major death was a, a a gentleman by the name of captain tom he was a 100 year old world war ii veteran who raised millions for UK's National Health Service last year. Um, so what he did was he started walking. He had a walker. He was just walking back and forth doing laps. And I believe his um, he pledged to walk 100 laps around his 50-yard long garden before his 100th birthday. And he only hoped to ra- he, he He was initially wanted to raise $1,000. Mm-hmm. Ended up raising $41 million for the health services. Um, he ended up... Um, losing his battle to COVID um, for the same thing that he was um, raising money for. And like uh, the same thing with Cicely Tyson, man, it's like (laughs) the old, the elders out there are really trying to, the ones who really do um, care about what's coming after them are really putting it out there um, so that we can have a future. And I, I want to live that principle you know, live my life to where I'm giving back to the next generation instead of just, um, it's mine. I'm taking it with me, you know, and fuck y'all, you know? And, and I think that's, that's, that's a good point because if you think about it, just it's two 
generally in our lives, there's two periods to where we are either are super, in a sense, selfish. So when I say selfish, um, I mean, um, um, like it, it can go two ways, right? You can be super selfish in a sense that I only care about myself. I'm super selfish to where I don't care what nobody else thinks. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fight for what I believe is right versus what society tells me is right and following the societal doctrine. That's when you're young, when those young activists that you always talk about, when you're young, you got that urge to fight and you wanna see amazing, big, massive change. Yeah. And then when you're old, when you don't care what nobody got to say to you, you know what I'm saying? When you don't care about anybody else's opinion because you're like, I didn't live my life. I did what I need to do. I made my mark or not necessarily made my mark, but I followed the rules for so long. Now I can go out there and I can, I can rattle some cages and make some noise. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um, I think what we kind of see in change is now that that timeline of basically being young activist and then oh don't care but so i'm gonna make the changes i feel like need to be made or fight for the changes i feel like i need to be fight, fought for i think that's kind of starting to merge together yeah to where because like not being funny but like you know they got the whole okay boomer thing right they're in the age to where no i want everything to stay just as it is yeah because that's my security you know what i'm saying yeah and i think as we come up i think our generation and the generation after us even more so are understanding that yeah that that may be cool to try to isolate yourself into a good position but then you're leaving everybody else because we are being we see what we're being left with when they isolate all the stuff to themselves and all that good stuff so now as we go up uh through that time it's more like even when we get to that age group we won't be such a uh conceited and only worrying about our self type situation. We'll be actually trying to push through that. And, and that's the positive I kind of see in that. But that goes exactly to what you were talking about. And I, that's the only reason I mentioned it because it might, you see all these these older older generation folks who are like, man, like I know how bad it was during my time, but I also know like the ones who pay attention, right? I also know like how worse is getting for you and what areas is getting worse for you. You know what yes. I'm saying? And I think they then take that mantle and be like, mm, yeah, I'm not going to let that happen. And I'm going to speak up and I'm going to say something. Yeah. And I also like in back to just everything, you know, like the elderly, like they get they have their, you know, like we all go through our phases in life, you know, and whatever they did, they've had their rebellious phase or whatever. And then they get to the point to where, you know, the golden years where they are. um just living their life and are able to mm -hmm. um like like shed hope <laughs> on the hopeless you know like um mm -hmm. it's 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 a certain level of uh confidence you get uh when like an elderly person you know hit you with that well baby it's gonna be all right you know or you know <laughs> you know yeah. young you know young blood keep your head up you know it's like damn you know that hits you hard and it's like when kids <laughs> tell you that you're my best friend, you know, you can't like, you know, those two things like make you hopeful, but it just, it just like COVID really did a number on the elderly by taking, like I said, like I said before, you know, like a bunch of trees fell with all the knowledge and we can't have that back, man. And mm -hmm. that's sad. Hate to start off like that, but we're back. Um, some of us have been gone. <laughs> For some other stuff. So um <sighs> January sixth. Yeah. They Hallelujah. There was a party at the White House. Can we call it a party? <laughs> uh party you, in the you USA. Call it whatever you want to call it. Um yeah. people use their PTO to <laughs> commit sedation in treasonous yeah. act. And um Anthony. Where were you at? <laughs> mm. I'm happy you asked because uh, I was calling <laughs> very you can, shortly after. Everything that you can say uh, within reason, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to yeah, get you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I was called up very shortly after uh, to defend this great nation and this great state of Texas uh, against any possibility of um, 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 those same actions happening again mm -hmm. uh, and to help individuals and support them in in their uh their freedom of speech you know mm. and rights but uh 
it was just crazy because this was the third time in less than a year I was activated um, due to civil issues, right? And um, it's a sad place to be in, right? Right. Very sad place to be in because one, you say, okay, you have a whole bunch of politics that play into a lot of the stuff that that happens. Like it's not just the National Guard or doing whatever they're doing, whatever case may be. It's a lot of politics to play in all of this stuff. Right. And chain of command and such like pawn. that. Yeah. Exactly. And I hate being that political pawn. And I, I say that only because, in a sense, that all, you always hear um, for the troops, you always hear. Uh, support the troops Mm -hmm. and that shit sounds good but you sit back and you look at like who really supports us no one unless it benefits them right and when you say that I mean legit you have um, and this is my personal opinion this is not uh, opinion of anybody in the military and and the army itself Texas Army National Guard this none of their opinions this is my personal opinion right yeah um but just simply, simply the fact that, like, I am extremely, extre- like, I'm, I'm almost a, uh, like, when I have beliefs, I'm almost like a, a purist in those beliefs. Right. And I am extremely uh, uh, of the belief that you should not use military force in the United States against the United States citizenry. Right. right. I just feel like. In any kid situation to where that's the case, something has been has gone so wrong that it, it just is it's ridiculous. Right? right. So when I say that, I mean that you need to identify what's the cause for if, if we come out, if we have to come out for anything like that, then you need to be identifying at the same time. What's the cause? So this never happened again. And, yeah. and fix that. Right. Uh, not just, oh, we have them. Let's go. No, because anything could have went wrong it take one person to make one wrong mistake i mean one wrong move one bad mistake one bad day to blow stuff out out, like out of the water right Right, you had uh it reminds me and i used to i was telling my soldiers this when i when i trained them um in civil disturbance operations because i am a uh instructor and that type of stuff right um of the case i can't remember what college it was but it was a um when national guard it was captured uh and reported widely national guard uh opening fire on college students mm-hmm. can i have to get that story i'm not 100 percent sure but when i was training this i had like literally looked this stuff up and i had it in the back of my head so that's why it was so so important to me but the simple fact of using the military against the citizenry is almost like the the last thing that I am, I am never okay with that. Right. I don't care what the situation is. Um, okay. Um, and, um, yeah. Yeah. But, okay. So, um, I'm going to circle back to that point you made earlier, but like you as a, as a husband, as a, mm-hmm. um, as a, as a father and you know, like we've been knowing each other for years. So you, I yeah. love you like a brother. And when I heard, when I saw, so me and you are in jobs where we can, are free to like, you know, we can work, we work from home, but we can also keep our ear to like news and stuff. So I'm sitting here Mm -hmm. (laughs) at home and I'm, and I'm watching C-SPAN and I was like, all right, it's not going to be that much because I've I've watched the beginning of everything, you know, because it's not just about. You know, I do label Democrat and liberal policies, but mm-hmm. I got to listen to everything from each side. You know what I mean? Because that's how you make yourself holistic when well, whole when you're, you know, trying to disseminate the news. So I'm watching, you know, I'm flipping back and forth. I got my TV on uh, Fox News. I got uh, my computer on C-SPAN watching live feed. So I watched Trump's speech and I was like, all right. You know, he's talking real wild. Rudy Giuliani got up there and talking about trial by combat. And I was like, man, this is some silly shit that they're talking about. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. and I was like, but somebody, somebody might take that seriously. And so when that wrapped up and I was like, all right, cool, this is over with. And then it wasn't over with. Like they got closer to the Capitol. The stuff happened. Uh, I remember seeing on C-SPAN like them 
breaching the Capitol. You know, I was like, oh shit, you know, they are in the Capitol. And I've never, mm -hmm. me and you've never lived through anything like this. You know, it's on the movies no, and stuff like that. No, and no, you, and no one in America has lived through this. this. That was the first time in American history. Right. And the that, way that has happened. And the way it went down, it was, it was, it was like watching a slow car chase happen. You know, like you see it, <laughs> you see the, like you can see every frame, you know, you can see the wheels turning and it just barreled into what happened. And then everything that, was it was like the biggest myth buster of <laughs> of 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 uh blue lives matter the biggest myth buster of uh white supremacy in america um just like i get it you know when hillary lost people were upset women marched because they felt that some of the policies that were going to be enacted was going to directly affect them noted mm -hmm. but it didn't get to the point of where they were running up in the cap i remember they were like on the national mall or some other no. shit bro <laughs> none of that is it, you cannot equate what happened after the the rally to anything that, and it's crazy because they try to equate that with uh, um, riots um, that happen in America. And I'm like, with Black Lives Matter. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because oh. I specifically didn't say that because oh. those are not Black Lives Matter riots. Right. Black Lives Matter had a protest. That was the same thing. Like Trump had a rally before, before. stupid motherfuckers want to go and try to take over the Capitol. Right. Like, you know, so this that's why I specifically didn't say that because they want to say the Black Lives Matter uh, riots. That was not a Black Lives Matter riot. Black Lives Matter didn't sponsor the riot. Black Lives Matter didn't say, hey, let's go tear this bitch down. They no, didn't do that. No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? And but a lot of the stuff was reactionary to say, too because, you know, thank you. And, yes. and you can even watch the, you can watch the, I'll give this other point too because I remember. <laughs> it's, oh, it's crazy because we watch so much goddamn news in this house and like mm -hmm. I remember. Um, waking up, my wife was sitting in the front room watching TV, and she was shook. And then she told me, and I was like, "What was wrong?" And when Trump said, "When the looting starts, the shooting starts," and that's exact—I swear to God, that's exactly like him giving the marching orders to everyone else when it came to this uh, uh, breaching of the Capitol. Like you are the ringleader, and everybody goes by that, and 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 it's totally different because. In the Black Lives Matter protest, a lot of those people were were marching. Bro, they were putting out fires. Putting they out, were literally, exactly. When I say putting out fires, I'm not talking about like little fires. They were putting out fires as far as when the conflicts would arise, they would run around and put in, and you're like, hey, chill out, calm down, right? Right. Perfect example. In Houston, Texas, we had one of the largest protests, I think, period, right? 60,000 people in the streets you can literally look at it they were at freaking discovery green started from discovery green they marched downtown largest one of the largest protests point blank period other than obviously you know like million man march and stuff like that right but i'm saying like during like modern time right now you know what i'm saying uh during this whole uh last few years right um in saying that not one not one person died. They didn't have they didn't have what they had in in, in all these other uh, uh, states and cities and stuff like that. Yeah. None of that happened, mainly because their community leaders had a tight uh, not gonna say grip on the the people the protesters. No, they just had a tight ear to the ground, listening to stuff that was happening. And when stuff would bubble up, they would run to put it down. I mean, put it out. They would run to fix it to make sure nobody got crazy. And then guess what happened? Once police said, all right, um, basically your, um, what is it called? Your, your, your permit time has have been reached. It's basically the time for the, uh, the protest to be over, the time that you schedule the protest, because you yeah. got to schedule the protest, right? Um, guess what they said? Hmm. Turn around. All right, y'all, let's wrap it up. We made our point. And they walked back. Everybody walked back to their vehicles. Majority, I ain't gonna say everybody, because obviously no, nothing is, nobody's a monolith. Nothing happens. Just, exactly. Most people walk back to their vehicles, and the night ended without an incident. 
we were not most cops weren't called out like and when i say cops weren't called out i'm talking about after the fact to respond to like craziness people getting beat up people getting shot people cop being beat on you know all kind of stuff like that and we had some of the most aggressive cops besides the ones who was running over people with freaking uh cars and stuff mm-hmm. the most aggressive cops but we didn't have those issues and i say that because people try to equate the two and they are not the same crime is crime criminality is criminality so right but at the same time the way they you get sentenced different oh for yes. different crimes is the same way there's a difference in levels to what actually happened someone burning a police station which i'm not saying that's right or justified or anything like that but what i'm saying is because my thoughts on that is completely different and nuanced and people not here ready for that here but um somebody burning a police station is nowhere close to people trying to people trying to to break into the capitol and kidnap elected officials congressmen and women and hang the vice president how does those things match they don't they don't oh but they didn't set it on fire what are you talking about five people died you really (laughs) bro thank you thank you i'm like bro they beat a peace officer with the fire extinguisher but and he passed away but but that's not true because blue lives matter they would never do that this is sarcasm by the way biggest (laughs) that, that. <laughs> and that blue lives matter stuff we probably can talk about that later but i gotta like that's the most obscene thing i've like that's 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 stupid that's absolutely garbage 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 the term blue lives matter is garbage because you're then associate you then you making the assumption that they never did and they have always mattered always when the average american always when a peace officer is killed that entire force is activated to solve or get payback for that action there was a movie about that with actual like code thing in there when they were like yeah but even then like i remember um uh in houston when i saw like 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 two summers ago like uh, a cop was shot and like the whole third ward was locked down i was like holy shit like the response to that yeah but this mm-hmm. but this was a whole different type of beast because of how the re- the non reaction was and like everybody with the hand ringing of like I don't know what we're supposed to do and then seeing people um I'm going to I'm going to send you I should have sent you this video before we started but I'm going to send you the video uh, I don't know if you saw the video when they were in the actual uh on the Senate floor and the cop came in mm-hmm. and was like, hey, you guys, you mm-hmm. can't be in here. What? Yeah. Black Lives, like yeah. when they, the Black Lives Matter protests didn't even get anywhere near there. They got fucking I'm a, maced before I'm they even got to you, the building. Exactly. I'm going to send you a video by a guy who I watch on YouTube. And he's not necessarily a, 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 a Democrat or Republican. He's very, very... Um, He's not like a party person. He's a issue person. So right. we look at the issue and decide what side he want to be on. And his name is Bo of the fifth column. And this dude explained it, it perfectly. He said, there's a blind spot in America when it comes to American um, right wing, uh, in a sense, like a uh, terrorist or like, like those groups like that, because those groups like often have Retired cops, off-duty cops, which we found off out. Off-duty military, <laughs> yeah. Like they often have those individuals, and they have. So when they do their analysis, and this is he explained it way better than I do, but he kind of like broke it down, and it makes sense. He said, when you look at anything that happens from uh, that black people do, they overestimate how dangerous it is, mm-hmm. and anything that like these those type of groups, white groups. Generally, white groups or uh, uh, or uh, right wing terrorist groups, uh, anything they do, they underestimate it dramatically. So I think what we saw was an extreme underestimate of what they thought their capabilities were right. and what they would actually do. And the crazy part is, as you watched it live on the news, that wasn't the worst part because what I thought was, I was like, oh man, that's bad, that sucks. But I'm like, like not no correction. 
I was like, no, that's horrible. That's bad. I was. I was like, that's horrible. That's bad. But after watching the people who were live streaming mm-hmm. all those videos, that's when you start seeing how, like, how bad it actually was, and how coordinated it was, and just like how it was like. And then it was also too. Like I said, it was like the biggest myth buster that we've seen for white supremacy with everybody talking about it's the ones who were left behind and blah, blah, blah. There's people like, and it's crazy because a lot of the people, well, not a lot, but there was a high number of people from Texas, the lady from Midland who has mm-hmm. her own business, who flew a private jet there. Like, oh, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. now um, New York Times put out a post earlier today um, about how she was getting let out to uh she's free on bond um to go to mexico free on bail to go to mexico right then they put out a retraction and it was just like come on now Uh, like even if it's believable because there's a guy who wanted um organic food and he got that you know uh people being uh, left to their own reconnaissance you know and you know you see that like i watch law and order all the time and all the cop Mm -hmm. shows people people flight risks you know, half these people got all this money, and then the other half of the, some of the people didn't even fucking vote. So how do you, are you supposed to affect change when um, you're not part of the process? You, all you want to do is... But no, so I, I would say voting is not... Voting to me is the easiest thing you can do. That right. is the most... The most... Um, in a sense, like the most hands-off approach you can do, especially if Going you are party line, vote. you know, and you mm-hmm. don't expect that's like party line voting is like you said, it's the easiest thing to do, especially when it's major, uh, uh, the big things, house, elections. Senate elections like that. But like when you get down to the other stuff, like, uh, like on the, on a regular local level, you know, people not voting uh, for propositions and stuff like that, you know, yep. and letting yep. themselves. Um, I don't know if I spoke about this before. Remember in Houston when they did tort reform <laughs> and they had and mm-hmm. everybody believed that tort reform was going to be a good thing. So um, it was, you know, there's there's laws and there's torts, you know, the civil side when you want to get money from like um car wrecks and stuff like that so they convinced the people to not vote for the tort reform so which ended up capping out damages you can sue a company for to $250,000 whatever happens so you could see those commercials you know like the Jim Adler's and you know these companies where I got such and such 4 million 35 million blah 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 but if you were inside of I don't know if it's changed or not um we'll circle back to that on another episode but the most you can get $250,000 and that's before before lawyer pay fees. lawyers but Boy, back to your point about cool. um um voting being the easy 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 way I, I didn't mean to oh, yeah, yeah. you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You're, you're all right. No, no. That's the easiest thing. That's the most passive thing that you can do. Being out there, going out there doing protests, going out there actually uh, going to city halls, going to these uh, town hall meetings, voicing your opinion, actually standing up for people, making these uh, changes, like going out there actively uh, campaigning for people. Those are things that democracy is, democ- for democracy to work, you have to have action from the populace right when people like but so you have some a group of people, a group who don't who want as least amount of action as possible because they get to feed you whatever information they want to feed you and hope that and most people will believe it and then they can rock with that and then but to be honest the more people are active in a democracy the better and more and and and, and more resilient a democracy is because guess what when you're active in a democracy and then someone does something right you put them in there somebody does something that you don't agree with or they're not the person that you thought they was when they got in there then you get up and you start doing it all over again you start you never let up you got to keep your demands there and that's why i never was tripping and everybody was all flipping out on ice cube and stuff when he's talking about what have you done what have the democratic party done where is our what are y'all doing for us y'all just want us to be there Y'all think we're gonna be there because of what because y'all the only people left? No, you know what I'm saying? That's why I, I was 100% with him mm-hmm. when he was talking about 
what is your plan for Black America? Right. You got plans for Asian America. You got plans for White America. You got plans for Corporate America. You got plans for Wall Street. You got plans for all the other motherfuckers. What's your plan? Where's your plans for us? And people was like, "Well, oh man, don't do that, cause, cause what you gonna tell them to do? Go vote for Trump? I don't care. If Trump had a better plan, guess where I would have been? Whoever has the better plan for for us, that's exactly what I'm looking at. I hear like, that. And I'm not saying us as as just like a monolith. Like I'm looking at the entirety of the whole. Right. But still, the peop the person who talks specifically to you, your class, your struggle, your people, understands that." That's who got my vote. That's why I say I'm not a party person. I'm an issue person. I don't exactly. Care what party you are? Right. I care about what you stand for, and if you're principal in those stances. <laughs> yeah, because even when like when they were doing the whole um, Trump's got a plan for us, I'm like, but dog, I, I hear that, and I hear that. What is what are they going to do for the black? But he people? didn't. Exactly. Like all you the stuff, all the it stuff he could have did day one. He didn't do. And then and like it, that's what irked me the most. You know what I mean? And I know Democrats have had their issues with um, with fulfilling the needs of us, like the black people in America. Oh, I also feel yeah. like now with what happened in Georgia, they're going they they need to give Stacey Abrams more latitude. And so she can write this ship, because if it hadn't been for Georgia and black women, mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, yeah. um, I don't, know I don't think they'll do that. No, go ahead. I think uh, I think she will be mm, she's going to go for governor again. She probably going to be uh, was it Kemp? I think it was Brian Kemp. Um, <laughs> Not the way they're it. trying to make it. You know what I mean? Uh, like the voters. Oh, yeah, they're, no. they're trying to suppress they're the shit to, out of that. Oh, they're trying to suppress the shit out of people. But I think she's going to. But because of what she did, and that's why I say democracy requires action, because of what the action she did after she lost. After she, she lost. Home, you know what? Scratch it. You know, I'm not worried about this. And right. I'm not saying she's some savior or like the savior, but I'm saying her actions after the fact is what I'm talking about as far as democracy requires action to be better and work in a book. And the favor of the 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 overall people, right? For it to for it to be a thing. Because after she lost, that's when she was fighting. She was like, no, that's not right. That's and that's what those mother that's what those people who raided the Capitol, that's what they're supposed to do. Not raid the Capitol. They're supposed to continue to fight for what they believe in. If right. they believe in something and you believe it's a and you have a good case, you make your argument and you put the work in. You don't raid the Capitol to try to put in the person that you feel like is supposed to be uh, uh, the president. Right. That's because even when the evidence clearly showed that that wasn't the case, you know, and like also it's, it, it's like we got to something's got to change with how people take in information with the context. You got like mm-hmm. ballots don't just appear overnight, especially the way they count stuff. You know, um, growing up, mm-hmm. I worked in um, with elections and stuff like that and how those dumps come from different counties. You know, the smaller counties. Yeah, of course, they're going to wrap that shit up quick. But the bigger counties, the more populous areas yes. where, you know, every same thing like population matters, especially if with voting and Senate seats and stuff like that, you know, like, um, you know, Texas has a lot of people in prison. So, of course, they're going to have more uh, mm-hmm. citizens. For a uh, population high for you know Senate and con- congressional seats, but in those heavily populated areas with people who are going to vote for what they feel and you know like you said vote on the issues, you know if that happened to be in this case all those counties in in Georgia were wanting to get those Republicans out of the paint because they have not served them and they wanted to try something different. You can't be mad at that because mm-hmm. y'all moved away, you know. If that's the center, then you should have stayed there and voted. But now y'all sparsely because you didn't want to be near these people. Now you're losing elections because of that now. And I feel like that's why, which also leads to another hand that they punch with and gerrymandering, you know, like Dan Crenshaw oh, from yeah. the from the half moon district in Texas. You know, no, it's like, yeah, you, yeah he, his district goes around Houston, but he represents Houston, which doesn't make any fucking sense because his it goes all around the half skirt. If you look at it, it's like looked at the freaking yeah, I literally looked at the district and I was like, "How is this a thing?" And that goes to not just him mm-hmm. because um, I looked at a uh, Sheila Jackson Lee's district. And yeah, look, it's odd, bro. I'm like, and, and that's why I say it's not a partisan thing. I'm like, but I'm like, 
why is and I when I say it's not a partisan thing, the power, the party in power draws the lines. Right. So that's the that's how the thing works, right? But what I'm saying is it been they it I ain't gonna say it benefits, but they put it off to where, okay, if this section is all gonna be Democrats, we just gonna give them one seat and we're gonna split this Republican section. Um uh, to have three seat, three Republican seats. Right? right. But I'm like, I'm like, bro, like this is absolutely absurd. Like, how is this legal? And this like, but that requires action. Mm-hmm. Democracy requires action. But the easiest thing for, but the easy, simple thing is for me to just vote and not care about it. You know what I mean? You know, as long as I believe and in Santa Claus, it, he'll bring and and do good. He'll bring me toys. Right. And that's why I say, and I always tell you, and I always tell everybody, I say, to be real, Black people are the most conservative people on. Oh my the God! Planet. Yes, it's just we have not been treated right by the party that's supposed to be a conservative party. We are the most conservative people on the planet. Exactly. And when I say that, I say that because, um, um, well, I'm not gonna get into all that. I'm not gonna get into that. But yeah, that's true. That statement is true. I don't care what nobody say. No matter how they vote, I don't tell you. I don't care how they say. And I'm not a conservative. Just being real, I am extremely progressive. But. I know growing up in a black household and a black church. Nah, you know what I mean? But anyways, uh, I black said it because church, we're, we're uh, going to get into that in another episode. Um, <laughs> let's get into our next point because we said we're going to try to oh, keep yeah, it right. correct. All right. So here we go. A couple days ago, maybe like a week or two ago, Ninja, Fortnite, uh halo 2 uh streamer said it is not my job to sit down and make a video with all my audience and do a lesson on civil rights and how not to be racist i show that i'm a good person through my actions and how i treat people and those around me every single day and he also said that it's the parents job to parent their Mm -hmm. kids and teach them about racism because that has worked thus far i have so partly he's right. Yes. Yeah. Is, I, um, is it is the parents' job to do that stuff, um, to have those conversations, and to to basically not raise shitty kids, right? Okay, <laughs> cool. But when but, the shitty kids are in your face, and they're the ones, and they're the ones who's spitting, or who's uh, have have basically only way it came to his attention is because they put it in his chat and people are like, well, why you don't address it? Oh, why would I address it? What do you mean? One, that's your community. That is your opportunity. That's your space and opportunity to lace them up to say, hey, hey, one, I'm not going to have that. That's not how I roll. And why I don't roll like that? Because X, Y and Z. Right. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to be you ain't got to be no civics teacher. You ain't got to sit here and go into no no big ass like history lesson if you do I, thank you right. but you don't have to that's not what nobody's saying what they're saying is take responsibility for the stuff that happened in your chat because if you allow it in your chat then that's a reflection of you right and more to the point is like he of course parents should teach um racism you know but as an adult in an arena or just being an adult, there's gonna be a point to where you become a, 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 a surrogate parent to somebody who's going to ask you a question. And passing the ball on something like this, and um, putting and going and saying what you did about Black Lives Matter for George Floyd, it doesn't. It sounds performative. Like how can you? Yeah, yeah it is. How can you be like Black Lives Matter? Absolutely. George Floyd was terrible. Well, why was it terrible? Ask your parents. What the fuck? Like, what? No. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're going to punch with the what hand, and you need to be able to punch with the why hand and answer those questions until you have, uh, for better or worse, knocked out the, or beat the uh, subject into submission. Dead horse. If you don't Mm -hmm. know, you're too fucking old to not have the ability to say something on this matter if you are getting those dollars and if that's if these people are part of your fan base you know but that goes back to like in my opinion it kind of goes to it takes a village to raise a child right type situation oh i got into it with a bunch of people on twitter about that from our account 
But go ahead. For real? <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, man. Yes. No, I, I'm for real. Like, it takes a village to raise a child. And when I say that, I'm like, hey, when the p- part of the world, p- part of the problem with the world today is that everybody feel like it's not their responsibility. And then everybody keep letting stuff go. And then it get worse and worse and be like, why ain't nobody taking care of this? Motherfucker, because you was the first person who saw it and you didn't say a damn thing. Right. Right. So, no, it's, it's like, hey, you don't have to be like super like i'm telling you you don't have to do you don't have to go uh, do some do the extreme i'm just saying let it be known that's not accepted here right. this is why do you think this is a joke we literally just saw x y and z and leave it at that you know right. what i'm saying paint by numbers like, dog no. if you if you look this is not ex- in everybody's twitch bio um you can put stuff rules frequently asked questions put a fucking link there you took that Black Lives Matter. And then, like, all right, so one of the um, groups I follow is um, Black Girl Gamers, and they have done a lot for women, Black women in the gaming space because we, I need know, to follow them. because we know how tough it is for Black women to exist in this fandom and comic book fandom. It has not been nice. So mm-hmm. with us, and like I'm saying in that now, me and you, we have our black queens, and we are about protecting black women in this space. But the way he came at them was fucking stupid. Like, yo, instead of... I'm going to diverge a little bit. But black women, when <laughs> black women take the time to show you a flaw, <laughs> sometimes, most times for me, it's been out of love. Now, if you don't mm-hmm. listen to it, then it go escalates to something else. But instead of taking that and be like, damn, you know, I fucked up. Let me <laughs> let me meditate on this. He did not. Um, said, he started talking about how he's building facilities in underprivileged neighborhoods to help. But I get that. But who does that help? Like I, I, I get that you were trying to get no, ki- no, 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 scratch all that crap. <laughs> that's freaking that, uh, that that pisses that pisses me off because that's like the the dad who's not there but who buys you all the gifts that you want. Yes, like yes, no, no. Actions have to you know, like your words have to be followed by actions. If you don't have the words, you're not talking about it. This is how I see. It. This is personally how I see it. That's like saying I don't agree with or don't like or don't want slavery but i'm not gonna bother those who have slaves right and everything don't have to go back to slavery i got that cool i don't agree or don't like men who beat women but i see a girl getting her ass whooped by her her dude or a man at a grocery store i'm like somebody deal with that no (laughs) yo yo somebody at least, like, like rate if you like I said before, if you're getting that money, and you did that, you know, and then like how, it, it's just like people were like upping him, bigging him about that, be like, yeah, that's cool, but also too, it also goes to another racial undertone about you're building these to get the kids off the streets. Like, what the fuck do you know about black neighborhoods? We're not all gang bangers, you know. Also, too, tell me um, who's the national leader of the Bloods and Crips. You know, what's the membership phase? You know, how do you know somebody? What's the official card they have? You know, we know the colors. We know that they might be black kids who predominantly wear red or blue. Right? Or they carry a bandana. That's the most you know about that. But the fact and that you that's think all you know, you're a fool. to keep the kids off the street, that shit is old and tired you know and then mm-hmm. if you are it's like the uh what's that maslow's hierarchy of uh, triangle of needs you know you're putting your name yeah. on something so that's all you're doing and all that money is going to come back to you what do you do you're going to be there you, you're teaching kids how to code and stuff like that but no all he said was i'm building facilities and my actions speak louder than and then like you know like i said i was getting into it with a bunch of people and i shouldn't have been engaging like that but god damn it it was near and dear to me because i grew up Um, I used to do this program called Taking Action Inc. where we would like clean graffiti off our neighborhoods and stuff like that, you know, and go and do that. And hearing like the offhanded shit people would say, 
you know, like, yeah, you know, you just keep you off the streets and stuff like that. But like the streets weren't tough like that. We had, you know, in my neighborhood, we didn't have street lights, but you know, we had the occasional gunshot, you know, and people who had a habit were more on the streets because, you know, the fucking uh, neighborhood like that. The same shit happens in the suburbs. You just don't hear about mm-hmm. it because those crimes are treated differently, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just, and it just irks me that the, that, it's it the tinge the of crime, the tinge crimes. of we're keeping these black kids safe, but that's not the case, you know? Black kids, the, those neighborhoods are few and far between, you know? There may be big, big um, epicenters, but it's not like that, because, like, even going back to like Trump saying that they're coming to the suburbs, you know, black people live in the suburbs. Everybody lives in the suburbs now. Oh, no, that was an old trope. That was old back in, the day, trope. Back in redlining times. Yeah. Where it was like, um, if one black person moved to the neighborhood, it would ruin the neighborhood and bring the property value down. Like, that's that bullshit. That was a dog whistle. And people who know, people who know about it, they knew exactly what it was. Yeah. So, but like I said, he's not wrong, but you can't pass the buck like that after you have stepped into the arena of that, you know? Um, and then like the, the but fact it's his that, community, bro. But, and then you it's take it to community. the extreme about, well, I'm not going to make a, a big lesson. Nobody's asking that, man. Just, you can direct people, you know, that's the biggest thing. I don't know, but you know, let me get some, even when, like when we didn't know things, we became Masons shit. Hey, they, let me get somebody to help me out with this. And they, Hey, yeah. what you need to know? You know, but I feel like that's a cultural thing where it's, you know, it's not my problem. And that, that doesn't help us at all because these same dudes, same people with that same mentality are the same ones who, um, make the, the pictures for prom and they're holding the gun talking about don't mess with my daughter and don't do shit. But this is, this is the, the underlying part of that. Cause I know we gotta go to the next topic is what he did not address, right? You're saying the people on your chat who are spewing racist crap, that's not my responsibility because I'm helping poor black people. Mm -hmm. Guess what? That does not change the fact that doesn't, that doesn't, that's not the problem here because those, the people who are doing this racist crap in your chat, those are not the people that you're helping. Those are not the people you're helping. The individuals that you're helping are generally the ones who are on the receiving end of that. And right. if you care about those people that you're supposedly helping, you want to make sure that they can they have that like a legit square footing, right? Because guess what? You're not doing, you're not lacing up and educating the folks who are gonna grow up beside them and utilize that point of view. Right. Because right. they may be the hiring manager. They may be, uh, you know, they may be the business owner. They You're might be in the system that, that keeps the systematic racism going. Exactly. That's my point. You helping them now to feel good. But this is a this is also a factor. And what you're not doing is what you're not doing is actually identifying the fact that, like, yeah, why should I have to deal with the people who make the system worse? Because I'm trying to deal with the people who are affected by the system being worse. Correct. No, how about you make the system better? Yeah. Jesus, black people, I'm helping you. Are you? But even then, you know, all this stuff has your name on it. You're getting money for it. Whatever money they spend there, that's coming back to and you. And don't get me wrong. That's cool. Cool. I like that. Right. That is fine. I, and I appreciate that if it's happening, if I see it come to fruition, I, you get no credit until I actually see it and I see what it produced. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I, 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 I give you that. But what I'm saying is you can't give um, you can't sit here and say, I'm, I'm helping you over here. So don't worry about the people in my community, the people that I'm around who going to make sure they work hard to keep you down right. or not keep you down and make sure that you don't have an even playing field. You know what I'm saying? Or make you feel like you're not worth shit. I just think that as an adult and as men we got to do better to be better than what was before us you know and passing a buck on something like this and just throwing money at it it's not gonna solve the problem yeah um, true. speaking of money <laughs> uh gamestop 
went from Ooh. zero to hero. The mother Marlin. fucking stonks. <laughs> Man. They took it to the moon. Man. And this the crazy is, part is it wasn't even about them. It wasn't even about them. It was about, and I'm on Reddit hardcore. And the fact that they got these people to elevate this and some people got a windfall out of it was really and truly power to the people. What was extra fucked up was when they, when the powers that be plugged the hole. Like, what the fuck? You cut mm -hmm. off the supply? Why? That's not fair. Like, and that yep. sounds childish, but what are you doing? No, 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 no. Fuck being childish. That shit is legit. That is absolutely legit. And when I say, like, you have a platform that is supposed to allow people, uh, the average everyday person, to buy and sell stocks. And you, in favor of, like, one, condescending because you say, I did it for their protection. Absolutely not. It's my money. One, I'm trying to spend it. Right? Like, I'm not going to take it with me. Exactly. Like, like that's like exactly. going to Vegas and somebody's like, look, that's enough, yo. No more. You got to get off the craft table because I care about you. They don't give a fuck. You know, let me spend the money. Let me burn the money. Thank you. If it's, if it's if my they money. Lose, if they were losing all their money and it was, if they were losing a whole bunch of money and it was, and it was sending that money to uh, the people that's making money, the uh, 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 the short sellers. Yeah. If you was sending it to them, you wouldn't have saved nobody. What's also crazy too, nobody. like, and I, I was thinking about that when I put this uh, topic in for us to speak about on our return show. It's like, like people talk about they care about them, you know, like you know we didn't want you to form bad habits, fam. Did you know? You played the lottery. Oh, I did when I was younger because my grandparents did. Yeah, mm -hmm. I play when it gets big. You know, I buy a ticket and do the little dream for a day and a half. You go to the store, right? You give them your cash money, right? you like, where's he going with this? I'm going to get there. Just keep riding with me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have a little message on the back. Gambling habits, blah, blah, blah. Play responsibly. I found out with the last big thing that you can buy tickets online with your debit card. So, hmm. do they really care about your gambling habit? No, they don't. Just like some drug dealers don't give a fuck about your addiction. <laughs> they don't care what you're doing. Look, buy the drugs. You know, get addicted. Same thing with opi opioid use. I know that's so far away. They don't care. You know, but you cutting off the supply of people who are trying to actively engage. Because a lot of people learned about stocks last week that weren't even into it. You know, this the it's a time. You know, people are trying to, um, especially with all the uh, stimulus money they've been giving us. You know, I mean, it 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 makes sense to spend that extra stimulus money. What they give us? What six hundred dollars a couple months ago? Twelve hundred dollars? Yeah, like a month ago. A month you ago, six hundred. So, what did they think? Like desperate times. It wasn't technically a desperate. Was it a desperate measure? I don't know. For some folks, it was. You know. Oh no! Yeah, it was. It definitely was. You yeah. know, and people, people, like I said, people are dying. Bills are getting piling up. You know, you're tired of those phone calls and something like this to where, you know, it could have been a boon for like Robin Hood and Weebull and all these other places. Hey, we have. It's like it could have been, um, like segmentation. You know, we talked about that when I used to we used to work in retail. You know, you know, you you sell the shoes, which are going to sell themselves, which is the stock. But you also sell the socks and uh, like the shoelaces because, you know, they're already here. See what else you can like give them. You, they could have given given free training courses on stocks. Or if you want to do this as a business, they could have job opportunities for that. Or this is what's going to happen. This is the things you want to avoid. It could have been something better than no stop making money and that is not especially now when people have the time to be upset about shit and to to reflect on it that is not mm -hmm. going to sit right i don't know if robin hood is going to make it after this you know because oh, i don't think i hope they don't i'm gonna be real i hope they don't and uh that's a hundred percent honest i hope they they have to file for bankruptcy 
I really do. And I'm not saying it because I want the employees to get fired and all that kind of stuff like that. That's going to be a side effect of it. And I'm not happy about that, but I think they can definitely get a job um, doing that same tech, tech work somewhere else. Right. Right. But I say that because that one, unless they are having a problem within their business that doesn't like that, that caused that to happen, which is coming out or it's looking like it's not, I ain't gonna say it's coming out. It's looking like that's you not know, the case. You know, unless you, that's the, the case. You sell the, the shoes, what you're going to sell you themselves, which is the stock. Don't tell what me you don't them that you don't say I have to stop. You can't, you should, they should not have the authority or the uh, uh, ability to tell me I can't take a position. Right. Or force me into a position because they were not just saying you can't take a position. They didn't say you couldn't buy or you couldn't sell. They said you couldn't buy. Only thing you can do is sell. So they're forcing you into the position that's benefiting the hedge funds that's making that's losing all this money. Only people who should be able to say what you cannot do is the government, because guess who the government is accountable to the people. And being on that app, I've been with Robin Hood for a couple of years now, even with my Dodge, Dodge coin, Doggy coin. Like they, Dogecoin, yeah. yeah, Dogecoin. They, they were getting people. They were like, not only were they stopping um, your ability to buy, they were also stopping people's ability to put money in. Man, like people, people saw this. They're gonna sign up. They're trying to get in where they can fit in. But then you stop people being able to sign up and to actually put the deposit. They're putting five dollar, five day delays on deposits. So. What was that last oh, week? Uh. So deposits should be hitting people now, and if they're still gonna buy, we might see a jump in the in those uh different stocks. If um they let it if they let it, you know, they let it go. But as of right now, they're not. And that's just so fucked up because like you couldn't log in, you know, you couldn't um you couldn't buy anything. And like it says, like on mine, it was like you have you this just- X, Y, and Z buying power. And I'm like, cool, let me re-up. They wouldn't let me do it. They just lost the faith and confidence of so many people. I don't think they're going to be able to survive. No. I'm going to be real with you. I don't think they're going to be able to survive. And that sucked because that was the decision that a few people made at the top of that company that's going to affect every single person that works in that company. Every single. Right now. Because at first I was mad because, you know, Google, uh, they got review bombed all the way down to zero one. To zero one <laughs> all the way down to one. Yeah. Uh, one star. And then Google uh, removed like something like 500,000 reviews uh, to put them back at like 3.4 or something like that. Why? Which at first I was mad as Google. At first mm-hmm. I was mad at Google. But according, just being real, again, like I say, I'm principal on everything. I, uh, yeah. I try to be as principal as I can. That's legit. That is their policy as far as review bombing and like the review system. Yeah. That's legit. That's so, legit. That is that would be how they would do it if if um, those people who got kicked off of uh, Twitter when they made that new uh, parlor when they made parlor and they if they want to go review bomb Twitter because Twitter wouldn't let them do hate speech they would be like no I I I personally feel like they reserve the right to do that like you like the same way if somebody review bombed it because they can sit there and, and spew hate you know what i'm saying and you reverse that uh all those uh negative comments and all those negative reviews you're right because that's that's not fair to the app right it's the same way i feel with um robin hood even though i feel like they're shady the same way i feel with robin hood but the thing is you also have legitimate legitimate people who are going to review it because they weren't able to trade and they've been using robin hood like you and legitimate people who wanted to do who downloaded Robin Hood, who wanted to actually initiate trades, and they weren't able to do that. Right. And they find out this is the reason why. That's going to be legit. And right now, I'm looking at it right now, Robin Hood is back down to 1.1 stars. It's going to keep happening. It's going to keep happening. But it's crazy, too, because, like, you, this could have been, this was the digital gold rush. Like, right now, this is the digital gold rush. And it could have been so much better. But like you said, it's not the 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 people at top who's gonna suffer because they're gonna get their golden parachute, like Enron. You know, those people are living mm-hmm. sitting pretty. Yep. Fucking Wolf of Wall Street, mm-hmm. even that movie, he he came out fine. You know, everybody else underneath those engineers, man. Like somebody said, hey, 
Stop mm. this coat. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I've been working all been I, this is my nice. in you know, engineers and software people, their coding is near and dear to their heart. But now you're telling me to tweak this, this shit is mine, you know? <sighs> you don't know shit about this. You know? And yep. just like me with project management, like I this is my baby. You know, but you're gonna come in with the scope creep and then and, and and mess up everything. Oh man, <laughs> scope creep. That's a that's a curse word. <laughs> that look, dog. That was the that was the whole capital thing. That was the whole cap. Mm-hmm. You had a plan, and nobody was like, "Well, wait a minute. What are we gonna do with that?" That's <laughs> it was Donald Trump's gold plating, which led to the scope creep and led to the capital rise. Hey. Same thing with this. Mm-hmm. You know, you didn't have no contingency plan. Because you like you saw something is like oh shit what are they doing, you know? And then it blew up in your face, and then it doubly blew up in your face. This could have been great for y'all. This could have been great for the investing community. Because remember, remember what they're saying. Um, I'm gonna try to wrap this up, but remember what they were saying. Look, poor people need to put their money in stocks and bonds and shit like that. Poor people try to put their money in stocks and bonds, and y'all y'all cut the well off, you know. Um, what's it from the <laughs> make paradise? The uh, something you took paradise down to build a parking lot. That's what they fucking did, man. They just took everybody's oh, ability to make something of themselves, or you know, just even have a little bit of sunshine in this cloudy 2020, 2021 year, and and it's just so fucked up, you yeah. know. And I think the overall the story not over as far as what this means and how it plays out. And I think what this really is, is a story of David versus Goliath. It's the people coming together to knock down Goliath, right? Right. It's the people who saying, hey, this, com- this, this. And it wasn't even that bad. At first, they, the people who, like, put, um, who came together with this plan, that was a smart plan. You have literally more shares shorted than there exist. You're going to have to buy them back eventually. You have to. You in on shares that don't exist. You're going to have to buy back. Right. You and it's also saying? crazy to so, be able to bet against somebody, man. That sounds like on a, on a micro level, that I sounds think, kind of fucked up. I think in a sense, I, at first I'll, I'll say the same thing, but I think that, not that, I think it makes sense in the sense that, um, like, it's not for... This was a, a unique one, and this I don't know much about much. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying this was unique because a company has not been so strongly uh, invested in a short of a company like this. Right? Companies always do that. Always during 2000, 2000, in 2007, before the crash, people who saw it coming beforehand, Wolf of Wall, I think it was Wolf of Wall Street. That, that no, that wasn't Wolf of Wall Street. Which was it was a movie that was talking about this, the big short. The big short. Um, um people saw it beforehand and legit voted, I mean not voted, but like bet against the bet that the system would fail. Right. right? There's a thing about that. And, and I get that, right? So I'm not gonna say I, I don't know enough to say it doesn't exist it doesn't need to exist. Right. I feel like it's dirty, but I feel like there's things that I'm missing, knowledge that I'm missing that kind of could make me be like okay it's something that could be there and that makes sense right, right. and i hear that because like like a lot of times when i hear about stuff being shorted like you there's a certain level of insider knowledge you gotta know to like you can say oh man you can look at sales forecast and like make a guesstimate like that store is not doing well but like like some of the shorts that people were betting on in the past kelly leffler and all that stuff was like damn you know these places aren't going to um make money because of pandemic you know let me like we could have mm-hmm. said inside of trading type crap exactly so where i want to know i want to dig deeper into that what blurs the line between inside of trading and actually knowing we might need to get uh justin on here and see what he knows because you know he's a oh, CPA yeah, too, for so, real. you know um we'll shout him out i would love that um so that's all our topics for today anything you're excited for coming up um season eight of apex baby that season thing is already dropped apex. and i'm about to be on that thing and i'm about to be on it did the you art, see the 30 30 repeater is a monster is it? i haven't played with fuse yet yes oh well, you got like a billion coins nuts. sir so um 
when's our next community stream night? Will you gonna stream um maybe tomorrow? Or sometime uh, this weekend? Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't do it this well. I don't think I can do it this weekend. I got drill. So you just came back. Early. Uh, you just yeah. came back. Bro, um, literally. What I, I want to do, I, I wasn't going to run this by you, but you know, on our Twitch page, we can do um, movies and where people can, uh, we can do a watch party. I know uh, Black History Month is this month, uh, one of the best months of the year, but you know, Black History is 365 days a year. Holla. Holla. Um, but I wanted to do um, a watch party. And um, I know we have. So this week in you're on drill next weekend is um, Valentine's weekend. So, you know, we're going to be preoccupied. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe during the week, um, I do want to do a showing of uh, Last Black Man in San Francisco. One of the films I watched a couple years ago that made me come to grips with gentrification um it's a really good movie um inviting you and the fam and everybody with an earshot maybe we'll do it middle part of next week um in instead of our pod we can talk about it there but um it's a great movie and like i said it's going to be uh through amazon prime and anybody who's watched our twitch page can watch along with us so um i want to do that but what i'm excited for is in may the um Mass Effect Legendary Edition comes out. It's oh, all really? remastered. Mm. Mm. Can't wait. That's gonna take up my time. <laughs> like for real. Like I there there's this legendary edition that comes with the helmet but doesn't come with the game. So I I I want it, but I can't justify <laughs> $149 for a helmet and no fucking with no game. game. Which yeah, is with dumb. no game. <laughs> um anything before we get out of here tonight, man? Hey, um, just everybody, uh, every day is, uh, every month is Black History Month. We make, we make history all the goddamn time. It is what it is, right? Um, and just legit think for yourself, have an open mind. Don't, like, understand your position is not always the right position. It's possible that other positions exist out there. And appreciate when somebody, uh, Appreciate when somebody comes at you with affection or not even affection. When people, somebody call you out on your own, on something, right? Regardless of the fact, it's not your attitude, but your, it's not your attitude. What is it? Your altitude. It's not your aptitude, but your attitude that determines how far you go. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, just chill out. Be a good person. Be a good person. And we'll leave y'all at that. If y'all like the content you're seeing, please like and subscribe. We are 10 followers away on Facebook from getting that sweet 1080p so you can see us in our beautiful glory. Um, with that being said, Anthony Powell and I are out. Uh, holla at the kids. Uno. <laughs>